I try to be as honest as I can. I always say I'm not a spec expert. I don't know if that's a yes. thing I made up, no, but no, I, I am not. I love the hobby. I love knives. I love getting new stuff. I try to capture that in the triple camera is that feeling of getting a new thing, looking at it. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkies, and welcome to episode number 114 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, which is the place for knife newbies like myself and knife junkies like you to learn everything about knives and knife collecting, hear from knife designers, makers, manufacturers, YouTube reviewers, or other kind of knife reviewers. Anyone who loves knives, basically, this is the podcast for you. And Bob, we've got one of those uh, reviewers today, but also a podcaster and a a, a Twitcher and an Instagrammer. I mean, this guy is everywhere. Yeah, he's a jack of all trades for sure. We have Ray from Everyday City Carry On. And, uh, if you know Ray, if you've watched his uh, videos or listened to his podcast, he's an amazingly personable guy with lots of energy and lots of uh, enthusiasm and knowledge in in, uh, in his growing passion for knives. He also has a mastery of social media. He's he's on he's across all platforms at all times, and he is making these uh, videos that really caught my eye on YouTube where. He does unboxings and reviews from three different angles. He'll have an angle, a camera angle on his face while he's talking, and he'll have two different angles on the knife and his hands uh, as he shows them off and manipulates them. And I got to say, I'm surprised I haven't seen that first or or before, and I kind of wish I did it first. (laughs) And uh, I think it's a great look, and it's a very comprehensive, um, well, it's, it's a very good way of looking at a knife from these two angles, but also to get his face and to get his reactions and stuff. Cause that's part of why I watch Ray and mm. why I, I listen to him is cause he's uh he's just a funny guy and he's a smart guy and witty. Love the conversations with right. him. And uh, the conversation we had was no exception. Not a long in agreement as he's doing the, uh, the videos and, and seeing his excitement and everything, but also uh, I think part of the fun of uh, watching YouTube reviewers, any kind of reviewers is when they say something and you disagree and you're yelling at the screen. No, that's not right. I don't agree with you. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you get to see his face while you're disagreeing with him. <laughs> that's right. That's right. No, but uh, Ray, Everyday City Carry, great guy. And another thing that that uh, that uh, piqued my interest was he's li- he's living in New York City and he's a knife nut. And those are those are two kind of contrasting ideas. So I also wanted to get his take on that. So it was a uh, really g- uh, great conversation with Ray. Well, uh, Knife Reviews, if you want to see some from The Knife Junkie, don't forget The Knife Junkie's YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube, thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. You'll see Knife Reviews there as well as all of our podcasts are put up on the YouTube channel. But also don't forget Thursday Night Knives. That's the live video show with guest co-host, others rolling in, showing off knives visually. That's Thursday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern. Thursday Night Knives live show on The Knife Junkie's YouTube channel thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Before we get into that interview with Ray from Everyday City Carry, want to remind you that our podcast today is brought to you by the Get Upside app. It's your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is the app you have on your smartphone whenever you need gas. And of course, gas prices now are down, but you're always looking for savings. All you got to do is search your area for those savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank. Then when you're done, your receipt prints out, you take a picture on your smartphone. Just like that, you've earned cash back. Visit thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Subscribe to the Knife Junkie's YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. I'm here with Ray from Everyday City Carry. Ray, welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's your boy in the NYC. <laughs> well, that's, that's, uh, that was the very first thing that, that caught my ear with you was your name, Everyday City Carry. And I thought, well, I was a city boy for a long time. You know, I grew up in the Burbs, but by choice, uh, spent a good 20 years of my life in the city, uh, Philly first and then New York. And um, in my day, uh, (laughs) I hate to sound like an old fart, but, you know, I carried a lot of crazy knives and was totally unaware of the laws. And now that I don't live there, uh, I am grateful that nothing ever happened to me. What is it like being a knife freak 
in the land of stop and frisk? Uh, well, I haven't, I've yet to meet someone who is as passionate about the gear hobby, not just knives, even like flashlights or anything like that. I'm sort of that weird guy. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, yeah, I just haven't met anyone at work. People are just like, hey, we need you to cut this. And that's like what they use me for. I show them a knife that's like $300. They don't understand. Like, I'd never buy anything like that. I've had people come and ask me to sharpen their knives and it had like really bad steel on it. So I couldn't even get it to a nice edge with a KME. I'm like trying to explain it to them. They're like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, it's like, yeah, sometimes it's like trying to sharpen the the lid of a of a tin can. Mm-hmm. But New York is is very, uh, in particular, it's very uh, uh, prohibitive as to what you can carry or even what is perceived that you're carrying. Mm-hmm. Uh, how has that affected your, obviously, you've got a, a love, a love for this. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how does that atmosphere affect your hobby? Well, uh, I can tell you this. I never carry on the pocket clip. I always carry in pocket. I don't do cartwheels in front of police officers. You know what I mean? (laughs) I just try to stay in my own lane, take the train, which is another crazy thing. So every month in New York City, around the end of the month, you have to watch out for bag bag checks. All right. There's going to be fold out tables with like two to three cops. And they're just going to whoever, whatever person who looks like they're carrying a lot of things, they decide who they're going to search. So if you're late to work and they decide, hey, you you're going to have to be delayed for like maybe 15 to 20 minutes and they're going to search your bag. Um, from what I experienced, like they're not allowed to search your person. I don't even know if I should say that here. <laughs> they are allowed to search your person if they think you're suspicious without that, without right. that table. Right. So they're allowed to search you whenever they want, which I understand big city, you know, the whole uh, 9-11 thing, they really got tighter with that. But I think this these bag checks are just a way to meet quota because it's like every month they have it. Hmm. And they they have I haven't gotten stopped uh, recently. I got stopped once, and I was wearing a full suit and tie, man. You know, now uh, I have to travel to Brooklyn, and what I do is I keep everything in pocket, leather pocket sheath with my sus- uh, two sus army knives and whatever main knife I'm carrying. I keep everything three inch, three point two five max if I'm gonna carry it and actually use it. So in case they do search me, it's like they do this palm test thing. They're gonna put it on the palm. And if it fits the palm, they're, they're either going to take it away. I, I think you're not allowed. I think they can't jail you anymore. I think you get a summons. But it's really up to the police officer to deem you dangerous or not. So the law is kind of sketchy. I just try not to get in trouble. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, that's that's my whole take on automatic knives uh, where mm-hmm. I live. But that, that whole palm blade on the palm <laughs> thing is so unbelievably arbitrary on mm-hmm. its face. I can't believe that anyone takes that yeah. seriously. Mm-hmm. They also have the uh, the gravity knife law. I think that's been abolished, man. I think that uh, knife rights, and I forgot, Slicey Dicey mentioned this to me. I think that that is no longer practice, the whole hold uh-huh. the knife by the blade thing. Yeah. Uh, which people were get tons of people were getting arrested for before. That was before my time in the knife world, though. So, so if you don't know what this is, quickly, uh, for a long time in New York City, a cop could take your knife, hold it by the blade, and if he could, through the force of his strength, whip the handle out and, and actually open up the blade, uh, you know, kind of like a spidey drop, if you will, <laughs> then suddenly that's a gravity knife and yeah. boy, you got an illegal weapon on you. And, you know, mm-hmm. depending on how, and they were allowed three tries or some some crap like that. And uh, so that, you know, obviously that that's the kind of law that that isn't actually made. It sort of just becomes, you know, through yeah. practice. And so that's what Duggar is getting rid of. But anyway, um, so yes, you try not to run a follow the law, but you you mm-hmm. you take some precautions, like you mm-hmm. drop the knife in the pocket and that kind of. Thing. Yep. Also, I don't use my knives in public unless it's at a place that trusts me and that I trust. For example, my job. Shout out Taylor CBD. You know what I mean. Uh-huh. Everyone that's there is family. They all know me. The customers know that they see me taking pictures of knives on this nice wood grain table that we have there sometimes they just know that i'm this knife youtuber yeah so that's the only time i ever whip it out man you know yeah yeah i i, I know what you mean it can be a sensitive thing I, my, people where i work are are trained as well i mean they know and trust me after after all these years and they know that i'm not a harmful thing mm-hmm. i did you know i just have this i just have this love for them and 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 so let me ask you this you obviously have some sort of 
unbridled passion for knives. Why not wrenches? Is it, <laughs> you know, like why why not uh, spanners or or pliers? What is it about <laughs> knives? You know what? Um, I got into the hobby because I was looking for a bag that could hold all my gear. I've always been a tech guy. Um, I've talked about this on a podcast before. I got my stimulus check. I saved all the money. Didn't spend any money. Didn't buy any knives or anything. But I spent seven hundred dollars on a new smartphone. So I'm like actually like part tech guy, part knife guy. And I was looking for a bag that could hold wires like within. And what's better than a tactical bag, right? Mm-hmm. I was a music producer at the time, but a starving artist. I needed to buy something cheap. I saw Prepared Mind 101, review a wrapped on tactical bag, got into the hobby after that. So he was reviewing folders and I'm like, what? So I started getting Kershaw's and things like that at first. Bought a ZT over 56, Sinkovich design. Well, and I was, I was in love after that. I was like, oh man, I have to see what the other ones feel like now. That's when I got into it. So, so do you feel like there is a, um, you know, just looking at the knives you've been reviewing lately mm-hmm. and um but listening to that story do you feel like there is a monetary threshold a weight threshold a blade steel threshold any sort of threshold mm-hmm. that after you cross it you feel like oh this is this is more for me than anything else you know i was always like an under 150 dollar knife type of guy but i'm starting to think that maybe i should save up for things along the lines of hinderers and things like that start to explore. After talking to Alex's knife box, mm-hmm. I had a podcast with him. I, I did uh, a awesome. podcast with Metal Complex last night. You know, he's a hinderer guy. Yes. And I'm kind of just like, I felt I was able to experience knives of that price range before. And I can see the difference, but nothing like a hinderer or anything like that or a sheer or something, mm-hmm. which I would like love to just handle for a little bit. I'm kind of leaning more towards that, like buy less fifty to hundred dollar knives and save up to get this big thing, you know. Well, that that brings me to your channel. That that can be a difficult thing when you stop establish a fan base who are looking for a certain kind of thing, mm-hmm. and, uh, in terms of what you're reviewing. Um, but at the same time, you have your taste, and 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 I I got news for you. People tune into you for you. You know, if you were just some dry lamo, your tastes <laughs> and your and your knowledge. Would not matter as much, but they like to tune into you. So, <laughs> so really, they'll probably go wherever you go. But, yeah. but I bet there's a balance. How do you, how do you figure out what you're going to have on your channel and, and how you program it? Well, um, there's a funny little group called the Apex Pass Around Group. Uh, Stasa, Zelric, and Blade Banner, I believe, started it. Mm-hmm. Um, and eventually, Blade Banner kind of handles the administrative. Uh, duties now right and he invited me to this group and it's really changed the trajectory of my channel so i was able to spend my money and use it for channel upgrades which i do all the time the smartphone for example that's 700 dollars. people are like why would you buy that instead of a knife and i'm like look my videos are awesome now mm-hmm. i have 512 gigs of storage i can make more videos at a time that was the problem is that i would run out of storage i edit i edit everything on the phone everything so um, I was running out of storage. And now with this, uh, go back to the question again. I kind of got lost for a second. <laughs> I'm just wondering how, yeah. you, how you figure out how to, oh, how to get it. the knives, how to plan out what you're going to show. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of the stuff I've been doing lately is just pass around knives and also user um, viewer submitted knives. Mm-hmm. Fortunately for me, uh, since I started the podcast, I think I'm on episode maybe 36 this week. Right on. Um, I haven't missed a week. Sometimes I do two in a week. Uh, people have just gotten to know me and trust me. So people send me crazy stuff. Like I would never think in a million years that someone would send me like a custom knife factory and, a, and an Alexander Chaburkov knife in the same package <sighs> just to say, hey, I want you to review this and just do a video on it. Right. And it's all good. I don't need any money. You could, you know, just send it back when you're done. You could hold on to it as long as you want. And that's really what's been happening. Um, most of the knives that I check out are from the Apex Pass Around group. And I just try to do my best to make it a hang with me. So when I do an unboxing mm-hmm. with a triple camera, people yeah. are really just watching it to see how I react to this thing. My, my knowledge is actually very limited. Yeah. When it comes to knives, but I'm as passionate about uh, as everyone else, you know. I, I gotta say, the triple cam. Uh, when you said your knowledge is limited, and I said, yeah, I wasn't agreeing with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> what, what I was getting to is, I love the triple camera because yeah. uh, Jim, our producer, tells me this all the time. He's like, uh, videos that have people's heads 
mm-hmm. are more resonant. People will click on on a thumbnail that has a person's face in it <laughs> before they will click on something that has a thing on it. And that's just human nature. And and what I love about your triple cam unboxings is that you're getting uh, – like I don't want to see your face the whole time, mm-hmm. but I want to see your face. What I, I'm there for the knife, but I want to see your reaction because I want to see if it's like my reaction. Oh, that Kubi. To me, that Kubi you just think you, you just yeah. recently uh, reviewed is kind of ghastly, but it, ha- yeah. it has, but it, it has, it checks all the boxes for me. Mm-hmm. Except I think it's ugly, you know. Yeah, I I know which one you're talking about, and I was like, I don't know. So I usually a- go to the audience when I don't know how I feel about something. I'm like, uh-huh. what do you guys think? And then they feed me the information. I always tell them also like. You guys can flame me in the comments for not knowing what this is. Um, I, I try to be as honest as I can. I always say I'm not a spec spurt. I don't know if that's a yes. thing I made up, no, but no, I, I am not. I love the hobby. I love knives. I love getting new stuff. I try to capture that in the triple camera is that feeling of getting a new thing yeah. and looking at it, you know? Yeah, I do. I mean, that's part of like, uh, um, you know, when I when I first started uh, my channel, Knife Junkie, my wife was like, I, I take exception to the name. And I'm like, I, I'm not <laughs> making light of people's actual problems, but this is the same kind of thing. Like when I have a knife coming, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Send it to work. I want to get it as soon as I can possibly, you know, and to me, that's a little bit of a junkie attitude. So um, I know what you mean. It's that that feeling of something incoming is almost better than opening it. And then mm-hmm. opening it is almost better than looking for the next thing. It sounds <laughs> a little, it sounds a little kooky. And, and, and I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to get rid of that attitude. And actually, Blade Banter reached out to me, and I'm I'm, I'm going to get in on that uh, Apex nice. uh, pass around group. And I feel like it might scratch that itch. Like, mm-hmm. um, for instance, I have the Civivi Shredder in front of me, mm-hmm. and it's a knife Love that it. I wanted. <laughs> I, I I do too, but I want to get rid of it. Suddenly, yeah. like I, I got it, and I was like, I, I wanted it so much more than I want it mm-hmm. currently. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm gonna. It's a great knife. I'm gonna pass it along. It's not necessarily in in my thing so um i'm trying to balance that and and i think maybe a pass around group would help that 100 percent, 100 percent. let me tell you another thing uh for people that are in, in a pass around group is that i've been seeing an influx of my videos being suggested mm-hmm. um when other people are doing videos about that thing around the same time frame like that kubi raven that you're talking about yeah. someone came into my comments saying i found you through big red edc because he just looked at this knife and then your video was suggested so this pass around group is creating this algorithmly driven thing mm. and since we're checking out the same knives around the same time it's like suggesting each other which is what i wanted to do with the podcast actually i always urge people to have podcasts because if you look at the comedians like Joe Rogan, mm-hmm. you know, Tom Segura, Chris D'Elia, all these um, uh, comedians that have podcasts, they just guest on each other's podcasts. Yeah. And then they grow their, you know, their fan base together, right? And um, I think exactly what you're doing, right? You will have makers come on. Uh, Blade Banner is designing his knife. I think it's coming out in the summer. And I was like, wouldn't it be great if we all had a podcast and you just oh. guess it on each one? Yeah. Talked about your knife and generate bigger sales, better Kickstarter for you and things like that. That was my goal in the beginning was to just allow the knife reviewers that people watch like a sitcom every week or every day or whatever and get to know that person, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, to me, the the reviewers, uh, you now are, are one of my new favorites. Thank um, you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I've been... I've been wasting my time on knife reviews since 2008 you know <laughs> when i discovered nothing fancy and and uh like talking to slicey dicey talking to nick shabazz it's like wow yeah. this this guy's a celebrity to me i know that sounds like i'm <laughs> yeah. sure to anyone outside of this hobby it's like could you get more lame but but to me it's like youtube um personalities are real people there's no there's no there's no fake and and when there is fake if they stick in it long enough that wears away and you mm-hmm. get you get the the un, you know when I first started making videos in 2013 and I dropped out for a while. When I watch the old videos, I can hear myself trying to be something, you know. And now when I do them, I'm just like, look at my cool knife, check it out. <laughs> Three yeah. minutes, I'm out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. how much do you think personality has to do with, um, or or approach has to do with the success of a of a knife channel? I think especially now more than ever, you have to have a, your own little thing right? I'm going to make a really good example here. You just had them on. Look at Neve's Knives. Mm -hmm. All right. There, uh, and I've done two podcasts with them already. I've talked to them 
like uh, almost four hours straight, right? Um, they have an uh, a video like chemistry, the way they interact with each other as husband and wife and how they're into this hobby. That's what people are watching. You know, your channel is a sitcom. And if you do it for five years, you're uploading videos every day, people are watching you, they're going to grow with you, man. Yep. You know, I think that's what I'm starting to see happen now. Uh, I've had my channel for about three years, but it didn't really start to click until I did the podcast. Mm. And then they were like, oh, man, he's this, you know, silly guy that lives in New York City of all places that is as into the hobby as us, you know? Yeah, that's a really unlikely part of your character. And not that you've <laughs> created a character, but I mean, to me, that was like, I, I got to talk to this guy. So getting knives shipped into New York City, is that, mm -hmm. a, is that an issue? Ah, I'm glad you asked that. So, uh, <laughs> the biggest retailers do not ship to New York City. I'm talking Blade HQ, GP Knives. Um, I haven't tried some of the others. I do get Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I get White Mountain Knives, things like that, some of the smaller guys. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Blade HQ and GP Knives, I have tried. And they would give me a call like, hey, this is so-and-so from GP Knives. And I was like, look, you have to help me. I'm an Asian in New York City and I love folding <laughs> knives. You have to send me something and they start laughing so hard right because they're imagining this character i'm like look i'm wearing a fanny pack right now i have a mountain <laughs> backpack i'm wearing boots like i am that guy but i live here yes. you know what i mean and then they're like i'm sorry we can't send it to you you know <laughs> can you drop it in the river in connecticut let it yeah. float downstream please you know what i mean so even amazon oh man uh tangram knives kaiser's uh lower end uh sort of budget sister company uh -huh. stopped shipping here because they were shipping through amazon and amazon decided that you know you, we can't have flippers so it's weird no yeah no you can't have flippers yeah it's what weird. are you gonna do with that <laughs> i mean because i can order certain knives um like spider coats and things to new york city from amazon you know amazon was my biggest retailer actually before and then i just started finding smaller guys and then that's how I've been doing it. Do they have any problem with uh, Emerson Wave or Wave opening features? Do they get that deep into it? Like, wow, that'll even open quicker than a switchblade. I think they did like just a generalization. Like Tangram and Amazon or I don't know this whole story. Uh, Slicey Dicey went on about this thing. And um, I remember Zelric asked me the same question. If I'm having difficulty, he used to do the thing called the Apex on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that was one of the topics. So... Yeah, man, my experience is like stick to the smaller guys. Uh, secondary market is always good. That's why Instagram is amazing, you know? Yeah. Yep. And and Blade Forums, I mean, you can get, I mean, I've sent off knives to places. I have no idea what their laws are. It's just mm -hmm. like, if you want this and you bought it, I'm assuming you're willing to take the risk. And so mm -hmm. I'm sending it to you. Yep. I mean, what would I do without Blade Forums? Man? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I forgot to ask you right up front for a pocket check. What are you carrying today? Uh, I've actually got the uh, TRM uh, at, uh, Neutron. Sorry, not the Atom. I traded my Atom, which I won. So here's the cool thing about the Apex Pass Around Group. Mm -hmm. Certain companies are going to give us knives and they say, okay, pass it around the 30 plus reviewers, see who wants to review it, whoever does videos for it, do a raffle at the end and any you know random person wins it. I won the Atom. Oh, that's so I won sweet. the Atom. Uh, I had read my Carta and... Um, and the gray G10 scales, I could, you know, swap them out. And what's funny is I just did the review of the Atom and someone posted it in the TRM Facebook group. And I was like, listen, TRM, I didn't post it. It wasn't me. I, I said, listen, I will make content for you for free. I believe in what you guys are doing. Um, and <laughs> it's funny because Marianne and I had a conversation on Instagram and she was like, you have a great voice, you know, like we, we love the video. And it's funny because in that video, I put on a wig made out of magazine shreddings uh -huh. and I pretended to be my mom. And I was like flipping the atom, pretending that I loved it. <laughs> so I'm just like, OK, thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so wait, wh why did you get rid of the atom? Oh, you sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. ADHD. I get a little uh, oh, yeah, off yeah. track here. Uh, so the Neutron is more my size, right? Okay. It's three inch blade length, slimmer. You know, I've got small Asian fishball hands. So <laughs> I traded it with my friend. Um, I call him Bobby, not Bobby. Uh -huh. He's a photographer. He had a Neutron. He's um, a big uh, supporter of mine. He was like, listen, man, I will trade you. I have three pairs of scales with the, oh, wow. with the Neutron and I'll trade you your Atom with the two scales. And, and, and I did and I love it, man. I love this thing. 
I I need to get uh, the atom. I yeah. really really need to get the atom, and I keep saying that, and then it keeps getting um, you know something else will come yeah. instead, or, or they're out of stock, right? You say the neutron is more to your uh, liking in terms of uh, your wheelhouse. So what? Describe your perfect wheelhouse knife. Oh yeah, well, yeah. Oh, it's smaller than your palm too. Smaller That's, than my that palm, means it's and it's safe. Have, and I have small hands, so I usually like to carry three inch blade length or lower. Preferably be three though. Below three is it's it's getting too too tiny even for me, man. Because I'm mm-hmm. cutting boxes. Okay. You know, I I one of the owners of Ela CBD. He's kind of like an old school gangster, mm-hmm. right? And he was like, I was flipping. I think I was flipping a spider capara like over and over, and uh-huh. he was like, "You gonna use it?" <laughs> you know, like like if I have beef or something, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, to recycle. You know, like that's yeah. <laughs> so I'm not doing a lot of um repetitive tasks that are going to wear on steels and things like that Mm -hmm. i do appreciate the higher end steels i know the big couple of ones you know like s35 m390 Mm -hmm. you know d2 atr13 mov shout out to atr13 mov which is what steel (laughs) everyone starts out with right Uh um but yeah i just not using my knives that much so i am strictly an aesthetics ergos and action guy Okay. Strictly. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Because mm-hmm. that's another. That's another thing. I, I. I. I admit it readily on an on on a frequent basis. I'm I'm kind of uh, shallow uh, looks guy mm-hmm. and um, mall ninja. Like I, I like uh, <laughs> I I uh, for for a long time trained in Filipino martial arts. I wanted to talk like to you a little Kali? bit about that. Kali. Yeah. yeah. At, at a great place in New York City called Anderson's Martial Arts. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Anderson's on Broadway. Nice. Um, and so weapon is always the first thing to me, like, can this be used as a weapon? Yeah. Of course they all can, but I mean, does it re- you know, have my criteria, yeah. four inch blade, uh, some, some forward, uh, thrusting protection, some, some grip, that kind of thing. And, uh, and nothing sharp on the pommel that I can't put my thumb on. Mm-hmm. So I do that. And then if it looks good, if, if it, if it has both of those criteria, I'm, I'm, in or or one of one or the other so i don't actually use them that much that's that is yeah. the real that is the real yeah. thing it's i think just... i cut myself more than things to be honest by accident so <laughs> exactly you know? well i lost my train of thought there but yeah the the the, the point is like have it, having the wheelhouse so for you it is uh it is a three inch to three in a in a, yep. in a quarter Yep, comfortable in the hand, and it's got to have a really good action. Um, I really love thumb studs that work well because I'm one of those like trick guys. I do a lot of tricks and stuff. Like I do crazy things with with a thumb stud. And uh, what do you mean? What do you mean tricks? Uh, like I'll uh, let's see if I could do it with this. It might be too slim. Yeah, I can't do it with this actually. It's too slim. But um, you know, like things like this, like the old school stuff, like that. Like okay. I'll do that while I'm watching TV or like I'm waiting around in the shop for customers to come in. Right. You know, like I just like to keep doing that over and over. I don't know if it's an ADHD thing or a knife guy thing, but constantly flipping knives yeah. to the point where they're going off center, right? Which is something I always talk about. And people are like, mine didn't go off center. So uh, are you a fidgety guy? I mean, does it does it drive everyone around you nuts? Or are you just talking about it's a it's a... It's not a nervous habit. It's something you want to get better and better at. Uh, you mean with the fidgety? Yeah, yeah. Because you said you like a thumb stud. You like all the old tricks. Yes, yes. Um, no, you know what? People don't get annoyed at it. Um, Kelly, my fiance, she's like used to it. Um, and maybe she finds it endearing. I don't know. She's a crazy person. But um, <laughs> like, I, I think it's just part of my character, man. I've always been a hyperactive guy. I, Whenever I'm in a group, I like to kind of include everyone in so no one feels like mm-hmm. an outcast mm-hmm. so i just have that energy man like I'm, I'm just a hyperactive dude and i'm always doing something let me give you a perfect example when i'm editing videos on my phone i have one single ear earbud on this ear and i could be listening to a podcast Jeez. or watching a movie in the other ear and i'm editing a video and i have a third phone i have three phones i have a third phone which i'll use to answer messages that's how far the adhd wow. has reached but that is my system to cope with it. Well, I mean, yeah. you could call it ADHD or you could call it uh, someone <laughs> with a super wide bandwidth. I mean, like yeah. Bruce Lee used to do all sorts of exercises yeah. while he was studying and writing stuff <laughs> down. So, yeah. you know, some people just have extra wide bandwidth. So, I, you know, the fidgety thing, the opening mm-hmm. and closing, you said you're, you're an ergonomics, aesthetics and action guy. Yes. Um, when I was... I, I had uh, Greg Medford on the podcast and, and, mm-hmm. I, and I mentioned him. So, I have two Medfords that I've gotten yeah. recently. 
And they are like the least fidgety knives of all yeah. time. And mm-hmm. I think he prides himself on that because I asked him, you know, what do you say to people who want to fidget with your knives and find it difficult or something like that? And he's like, I'd say if you're a man, you shouldn't be fidgeting at all, blah, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> he went down this rabbit hole, which I loved and we all love yeah. Greg Medford for. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was it was hilarious. And 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 his knives, and uh, yeah, I've gotten this Praetorian recently, mm-hmm. are audaciously unfidgety. Um I would probably just open it over and over again, man. Until, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, then, and then with muscle memory, my thumb would just know exactly how to do it smoothly. And that's what I would do. Every knife that I've had, I've, I've gotten accustomed to it. And I'll just be watching TV. Even if, it's, if you, there's no flipper, no thumb stud, you have to slow roll it. Yeah. Like, I'll figure out a way. Right, right. And, yeah. and, and you build up that callus. Like, for a while, <laughs> the thumb hurts in that weird place. You didn't even know you had nerves. And yeah. Then, <laughs> yeah. And then it comes back in. So, in, in terms of your collection, what is yours? Okay, so now I know you get a lot of stuff from your from the Apex Pass Around group. What, what do you keep? What do you decide to buy? How does that work? So, um, I haven't bought anything since the small Archeo from designed by Dylan Mallory from Artists okay. and Cutlery. I have two of those. One was sent to me, the G10 version, and then I bought the copper one. That's the last time I bought anything. I always keep user like donated knives unless they want me to make do a giveaway so someone someone just gave me a spider coat kapara he's like i have an extra one i'm gonna give it to you and this is like one of my favorite people on youtube right now he comments like 30 paragraph things (laughs) on all my videos and he's an english major so it's not like just gibberish it's like (laughs) oh okay this guy took the hour or so to write this and um, yeah, he just gave me one. Uh, that guy, Bobby, not Bobby, gave me knives as well. And I, these are things that I have a personal connection to, so I'm never going to get rid of it. You know, if I bought a Hinderer, I, I don't know, talking to Metal Complex, he was like, listen, man, you enjoy the Hinderer for a little while. He was telling me to get an XM18, the three inch one. And uh, once I was done with it, I could turn it around for maybe $100 or less in the secondary market and buy my next thing. That's kind of like my new expansion to the hobby right now is i'm gonna buy something big when i'm done enjoying it i'll turn it around because i don't don't get a a lot of money right now because you know new business Mm -hmm. you know when the cbd boom kicks off which it will hey man everyone get everyone getting some benzes i'm doing (laughs) i'm doing my best on my end over here (laughs) um yeah that's interesting because uh i i grow attached to things and i don't Mm -hmm. know if that means i'm a a materialist or or if i if i um, imbue these these things with a soul they don't have. But I'll get, for instance, uh, I, I I have had five hinderers and I've gotten rid of one. And mm. of course, like there are little pangs of regret always. But but my whole thing is, well, I grew up in Ohio, and hinderers are made in Ohio by a man <laughs> who you know worked the <laughs> earth and then he broke horses and then he became a fireman. Like. To me, it, it, I have a story behind them. And not only to me are they the, like just the greatest. I just love them. But they also have I, – I feel a connection to them that's deeper than, A, it was a gift because I never get rid of a gift knife. Or, or B, I just like it. So, I, I think I tend to build stories around things and to trap myself into owning them. Mm-hmm. Is that something that uh, you can relate to? Yes. Yes. Um, it's funny you mentioned that because while you were telling me your story – I was already thinking of my answer, which is what really locked me into this hobby. So, um, a few years ago, my dad passed away suddenly and um, I was lost, man. This is before I started my YouTube channel and I was getting into YouTube. I started listening to Joe Rogan's podcast. I was watching Gary V and Gary V is always like, hey man, start, there's a business inside you, start a YouTube channel, you know, like, and all this stuff. So, I got into the knife hobby and I was just looking for every knife possible. I came across a company called Sandra Knives. They're from Italy. They do tungsten carbide, folders, fixed blades, really high-end stuff. My dad's name is Clemente. He's Filipino, okay? Sandrin makes the first tungsten carbide folder called the Clemente. It was $995. I bought it. I bought it and actually my highest viewed video is about that knife and the intro to it is notorious for making people feel emotional because 
Um, like I've had said, uh, Pete from Cedric and Ada Gain Outdoors. That's how we linked up. Was he he was reviewing the TCK, and he, I guess that video was suggested to him, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Dude, this was the most emotional thing." There was piano music. The opening line was, "People say that you don't become a man until your father dies," and then you see it pan through the knife. Like that's when I was in my cinematography phase, when the channel was more. I was trying to make these little movies, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had people like from all over the world reach out to me saying like, man, my dad passed away too. And this brought me back. Like I connected with them. That's when I really was like, okay, maybe I have something here. Like I don't know anything about knives, but if I put like my honesty and feelings in these videos, people will will respond to it. And to this day, man, like I still have that knife. I used it, dude. There's no way I can sell it. I've dropped it so many times. I'm trying to get it kind of uh, get some maintenance done on it, but it's kind of hard since Sandrin is in Italy. And who's going to sharpen a tungsten carbide blade too? Right. You know, Uh, I lost a screw for the pocket clip. And this is a $995 knife too, you know, but I always felt like, you know, my dad would want me to use this and I'm going to keep it forever. And this is the Clemente one. They're up to the 2.0 now, I think. So, yeah, I definitely understand that feeling of, uh, you know, personal connection to, uh, to a knife. Well, that is a really profound personal connection. <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of uh, some knives from my grandfather that mean a lot for me. Uh, mean a lot to me uh, for similar reasons. But I, I mean, you know, that video sounds like something I have to see. I, <laughs> thank God I still have my father. But I mean, yeah. what a profound connection. Yeah, Sandrin like actually reached out to me, man, and reposted my uh, Instagram clip and said, "Hey." You know, this is awesome that we were able to, you know, like generate this kind of emotion with you and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I, it's it's funny, I, I don't make a lot of videos like that anymore, but I do feel that maybe once in a blue moon, I'll make a video like that. I, I did this funny movie trailer of the ZT-0900 and I did it like an 80s movie, like an <laughs> 80s synth wave in the background. There's like right. a car. And then um, it's like the bladeless waste. I have the movie theater voice. I yeah, edited yeah, yeah. my voice and it's like in the bladeless wasteland of New York City, you know, where creativity <laughs> means death, like, you know, like all this stuff. And then at the end, I walk into the shot as a drawing and then and one man can save, uh, can find the 0900 and save the universe. That man is EDCC. And then when I click the knife open, I like morph into reality. <laughs> oh, that's cool. yeah. It was like, and then and then it says, um, with an all star cast starring famous knife designer, and I call him Lace the George George because like Lace could mean the <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Lace the George George. I put Nick Shabazz in there, <laughs> Patty's was... Potato Peelers. I was trying to like wing them in to be like, oh look at this crazy guy yeah. making these funny knife videos, and you know I still haven't seen anyone doing that. I think Jack Farmboy does similar stuff now. I okay. love Jeff Farmway. And you um, mentioned Cedric. Uh, Cedric, he does oh, a lot. Oh yeah, of, uh, yes, he does a lot of cool. Fun Those stuff. are probably my top three. If I was going to watch a video right now, I like creative stuff. So Jack Farmboy, um, Advanced, Advanced Knife, Knife Pro, Pro yes. Cedric and Ada. Awesome. Although uh, Backpack B is the new guy right now. I, I just had him, him on my podcast. B A K P A K B. Hands down, the best motion graphics. That's what he does for oh, a living. Wow. That's awesome. So he'll put like. TV movie quality edits of like you'll see uh, uh, Chris Reeves Sabenza, then all of a sudden it'll become schematics, and then like oh, it's made with this, you know, this is the bearing system, yeah. this is the kind that I got. Very well done, man. Like God. like they any of these companies would be lucky to have him on right now. All right, I got to check him out. It sounds like yeah. he's breaking things down for everyone. yes, yes. So uh, what I, what I wanted to say before I got a a, a little bit, uh, but. You know, I like to make light of this hobby. It's just crazy mm-hmm. and we pretend it's so important, but it's not. But but really, that's only half true because when you talk about your video, uh, mm-hmm. you know, of your of the tungsten, not the Clemente, or mm-hmm. when I think about uh, certain attachments I have to things, physical things that have been handed down to me uh, from people I love in the past, like that is the connection that matters the most. Yes, I I love all of the aspects of the hobby, but to me, like, if I lost any of these knives, it wouldn't matter because I still have my grandpa's knife. You know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. So, so uh, though I make light of it and like to pretend, it, oh, it's just a, a niche hobby thing and we're just crazy kooks. 
it's really an attachment to the past and and you know you know an attachment to the people we love but also i mean we're we're all descended from the strongest people who survived throughout history and they yeah. all had knives yeah <laughs> yeah man you know to t- to talk about that a little bit um th- the knife community is like in its infancy if you look at the grand scheme of youtube and i talked about this metal complex yesterday it only takes one really huge person. Like if Drake started EDCing, <laughs> like can you imagine how big Nick Shabazz or any of these guys that are doing YouTube? It it just really only takes that moment. Like the knife community just has had that moment, but it would be impossible to think that it will not have that moment. Do you know what I'm saying? What yeah. if a big blockbuster movie about survival came out? And they talked about, it was very gear specific, and maybe Leo DiCaprio was the main lead. Right, right. And it was this huge thing. Yeah. Do you not think that Knife YouTube would get bigger and become more mainstream? Right, right. It's kind of yeah. like, how are you going to get into the car? I'm not saying I want that to happen, but it can happen. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, why not? You know what? I, I yeah. always kind of uh, uh, flippantly mention the hipster knife brands like the James mm-hmm. brand. Uh, mm-hmm. But but when I do that, uh, I'm actually also throwing a lot of respect in, in their direction. Because not only are they creating cool products, but they're doing it in such a way that that brings in more people into the mm-hmm. knife world. Into the yeah. and it might not be everyone who buys a James Brand knife wants to start a knife collection, but mm-hmm. they have an appreciation for fine things and an appreciation for the fact that they need a knife. Yeah. And to me, that's that's where that's where um, the James Brand Quiet Carry some of the. Some of those, I love James Brand. Yeah I, yeah, I I really think that that they are doing a, a valuable thing, and and also um, we talk a lot about um, Kickstarter fund, uh, you know, mm-hmm. crowdsourced small companies that have a great idea that uh, just need a little a little nudge over the over the hurdle, and then they can yeah. get get going. A lot of great stuff out there. Do you ever think about uh, creating your own knife or, or producing a design or project like that? Yeah, I'd call it the fish paw. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, that would be awesome. Um, I I haven't, you know, like I feel like I haven't even dipped my toes into the knife hobby yet. I, I mean, I have, but it's like, for example, Michael Zeba, like Zeba Knives is here in New York City. I haven't gone there. Um, uh, Alex is like... Is there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, I. It's funny. I found uh, who was here because I was so sick of working in an office. I was like, knife industry, in New York City. <laughs> there was like two hits. <laughs> like, you know? So, um, yeah, like uh, Alex was like, you should do, you know, a, a tour around Zeba Knives like yes. workshop when all this is over. And I would love to do that because I want to learn more too. You know, I feel like I'm always just learning how to edit, how to do this cool new thing, getting the next guest. Uh, unboxing this thing that's what the bread and butter of the channel is now so i'm not learning as much as i did in the beginning Mm -hmm. but i would love to i gotta go to blade show that's what it is everyone is like go to blade show uh tell people you're not an exhibitor and you're everything city (laughs) carry yeah (laughs) go with your crest uh, credentials yeah press Um, credentials but yeah, man, I, I definitely want to learn more about that. And I'd be open to it. You know, like I said, Blade Banner is designing his own. And I love that, what he's doing. I don't know what I'd make, though, right? You know what I mean? Something with a cool locking mechanism, I think I probably. know what you'd make. Let, let me guess. You know? Let me guess if this might yeah. be. Yeah, okay, let's go. Let's okay. go. <laughs> All right, so so it would be a folder because mm-hmm. uh, it would be a folder. It, it would have a, a three-inch blade or maybe 2.9-inch blade. Uh, it, it would, it would be a, uh, uh, drop point and it would have very, a very neutral handle. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and it would have some, it would have probably a front flipper. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What do you think? You know what? What? That's pretty close. Uh, you know, what's funny that you mentioned that I was thinking in my head, uh, one company who's kind of changed the way the aesthetics of their knives look lately is steel will. They've gone mm-hmm. more like color based. Um, kind of like the old ZTs when everyone would anno their stuff, like, right. you know, back in the 0456 days, you know. Um, Steel Will, so I post on Twitter every day. I, I call it daily knife content. It's just short, less than a minute of videos. And most of my Twitter followers are gamers, sneakerheads, oh. sort of like these um, like urban uh, ethnic guys. And um, they love the Steel Will stuff, man, because of the colors. So, like, if Steel Will could somehow 
collaborate with some kind of sneaker thing, mm. I think they could really like. You know what I mean? Because because you know, like the sneaker game is crazy with the youth right now. Yeah. They're flipping sneakers, selling them, and Steel Wool has this like bright color match fashion with your stuff. Maybe I'd do something like that. Front flipper, less than three inch, <laughs> customizable scales. Yes, to fit to fit with your you know. With your Ray, fashion that, and stuff, that that's probably a, what I do, man. Ray, that's a brilliant idea. I worked with a guy, a cameraman, uh, a couple of years ago who was as into his sneakers and sneaker collecting mm-hmm. uh, as I was into knives. And we would yeah. we would, we would, would talk more about collecting. Like, he didn't mm-hmm. know about knives. I didn't know about sneakers. Yeah. But we would talk about, like, be like yeah, I'm, I'm driving to Delaware tomorrow. I'm going to go mm-hmm. to some guy's basement. He's got a whole cache of, like... I don't Jordans know what, or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, like I got the Travis Scott Air Jordans, man. <laughs> I'm gonna get them right now. They're 600 bucks. Like, you know, so, so you're right. I mean, I mean, that's a great idea because they mm-hmm. would be tapping into, um, mm-hmm. well, the the aesthetics of it, and then the yeah. and then the perceived, uh, what do you call it, um, limited edition ness yep. of them, and mm-hmm. and and the uniqueness and the collectability. That's what like Case Knives and Spider Co are mm-hmm. all about. Make the same knife in a million different ways. And uh, and I could see that. And Steel Will has such interesting blade shapes and yeah, the color and schemes, th- man. That's what's getting them. People are asking me, where can schemes. I buy this? And then you know there, there was a black and red one, like a black coated blade. I think it was the Sargus, um, black, a red G10, bright red, mm-hmm. uh, a, a different color backspacer. You know, black um, pocket clip. They were like, yo, where can I get this right now? This matches my kicks. I'm gonna get it tomorrow. <laughs> that's so cool. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I started doing more Twitter. You know, dude, I'm on all of it, by the way. Like, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Twitter, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Instagram. I try everything. Wow. Um, so, it, it's funny with, with TikTok right now, people always, like, kind of, like, make fun of me of this. I'm not doing the dances, okay? That's not what I'm doing, right? <laughs> Thank you. You don't need to do that. <laughs> but I do, Um, I have to get creative because you can't flip knives open on TikTok. Nick Shabazz told me that he tried to make one about the Z Hunter. They took it down right away. And I've had the same experience. <laughs> so what I do is I kind of like look at the talk about the knife with it closed. Then I put it down. And then when I lift my hand up, I've edited it. So it's already open. Mm-hmm. And then I start talking about it that way. And people enjoy it like that. What about I've gotten closing cross- it? I don't close it. Okay. So I've gotten crossover uh, viewership, though. Like someone from TikTok was like, dude, I didn't know you did YouTube. I'm going to go to your YouTube right now. And then when he watched my stuff, he was like, holy crap. I can't believe like I've never known about you. And that's just another avenue for the knife community to grow because it's becoming this emerging platform that's rivaling Instagram. And Instagram doesn't even want us right now. So, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, I feel like as a knife uh, content creator, you got to try everything. You never know what's going to pop, you know? To 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 quote Patty, I've been living in a dark place. What what about what about IG not wanting us right now? Well, you know how they've been like kind of uh, taking down the hashtags that we're used to using. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing I've been doing is like I've been copying some of the bigger pages as hashtags and like just using theirs. <laughs> you know, like I, I'm nowhere near like a successful like social media person, but that's kind of like more my wheelhouse. I love looking into that. Lo- I what well, Patty talked about this. He said you would probably be making videos about something else if you didn't find us. Right. You know? And right. that's so true. My my addiction really is making a video, talking about it with my audience, seeing how they react, and then they suggest things to me. I love doing that. This too, talking to people now, the podcast. I, I love it, man. I love it. So what are your what are your goals with the channel and with the podcast? Um, you know, long term. Long term, uh, it would be cool to make some scratch from it so I can like just keep it as a side thing. I never expect it to be my main thing. Mm-hmm. I love doing it. I am constantly thinking about what to do every day. Um, I'm producing content daily for everything but YouTube. But since this quarantine happened, I've been uploading a video almost every day. And uh, the goal is to just really get to know more people, let the podcast grow, get let the audience know me more. Um, you know, when, it, dude, people greet my fiance when it's her birthday. They're like, tell Kelly we said happy Aww, birthday. Like, they cool. remember before me. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it's just something that is one of the goals is to just keep bringing this energy to the community that I, I think I'm only providing right now. Mm-hmm. I'm this weird guy. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want to keep on doing that, man. Just keep it real, you know, just be myself and just keep making videos. Well, you got a very positive uh, uh, bent to your to your uh, to everything, 
And I really, you know, your YouTube videos really resonate. Like I said, the, the, the three camera angle is so needed. <laughs> it's so nice. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but what, what does Kelly think of, uh, the knife thing? Well, she was, uh, she was with PetSmart for like 18 years. She was making a crap load of money. She left there to be a personal trainer at Equinox now, which is her dream oh, job, nice. right? So she doesn't get to like EDC anything. Cause I mean, what are you going to, yeah. what are you going to cut like resistance bands at, at a gym? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, but she was carrying knives before. Uh, she really loves the Steel Wheel Cobalt, which is like a small, tiny mm-hmm. knife. She saw the best like tulip. Um, she likes tiny knives, you know. She's a tiny girl. He's like four ten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but she, at first, um, when I told her I had a YouTube and I make these YouTube videos, I I, I had like three hundred subs or something, you know. And um, she's like, "Why folding knives?" <laughs> like, you know, every girl I think is not in the hobby is going to question that. Like, right. is he going to kill me? I mean, am I <laughs> falling into a trap here? Yeah. You know? But she's, she, she, um, she understands now that the connection with the audience is what I love the most. And um, if it's an, it, and that I am into knives too, I just happen to be into that. So that's what I'm talking about. But well, you, you know? also, uh, if you don't mind my saying, you also have it uh, streaming through your blood. You're you're a Filipino extraction, and I know and that's I... a very bladed culture. I, I I have several of them up behind me here. I, yeah, <laughs> I I'm a huge fan mm. of Filipino knives and swords. Balisong, and, right? Uh, well, I don't. I, I have a couple of cheap. Balisong. I can't have them. I can't have them I, here. Well, I, you can't even have them in your house. That is insane. That's yeah, I can't have an auto in dangerous. my house. Yeah. Yeah, in the Philippines, I don't know if you know about um, Batangas, which is where uh, they create Balisong Batangas, which is the giant yes. ones. Have you seen those? Yes, I have. I've actually have never seen it, but I've seen pictures and I'm like, man, the next time I go, because I'm never in Batangas. Uh-huh. So, but yeah, the giant, wouldn't you want to have one of those just like in uh, your house? Yeah, I want it right on this wall, right <laughs> <Yeah>. behind, <laughs> right behind like, me. <laughs> yeah, Dude, it, they're so awesome. And when you see pictures of people with them they mm. always look like yeah this is like the most normal thing ever yeah <laughs> <laughs> well uh but, but I, I you know we're gonna have to wrap in a minute but I, yep. I i'd be remiss if i didn't ask you what things are like in new york city right now we are recording this uh about two two months after lockdown mm-hmm. uh in 2020 uh the covid19 thing uh, what's it like in new york right now Okay, so for me personally, I haven't left the apartment except to ship knives for the Apex Pass Around group or to throw away garbage within my building, right? I've had groceries delivered for over two months. We've been fortunate. Um, my, you know, my fiance just has a schedule. Fresh Direct comes today. Whole Foods comes today. And we have not gone out to buy groceries at all. Um, I'm going back to work actually next uh, Monday. Great. Uh, my business is considered an essential grocer since we, we sell CBD. So that's like supplements and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've heard it's crazy, man. I've seen a lot of videos. I've been keeping up with, uh, you know, Cuomo's Twitter and all that. And like, I just think that people are starting to kind of just want to go out now, you know? Um, yeah, it's getting warmer. Uh, yeah people are starting to want to go out. Uh, I, I think that even my family, he was like very afraid at first. That's why he told me not to go to work um, because I have a, a pre-existing lung injury. My lung collapsed when I was 23 mm-hmm. and um, they were just worried, you know. Yeah. But then now it's like, they're like, hey, man, I think nothing's happening. <laughs> we're all good. And uh, I think people are starting to get tired of being home. I'm not. I'm a nerd. I can watch Netflix <laughs> and anime all day. My girl plays video games and I'm just going to review knives. That's all my time right there. Right, right, right. Can, we, know? can we just so, stretch out this pandemic just a little yeah. while longer? I got a couple you more know, knives to review. I was working online just making uh, Instagram like content for A-List and uh, just making videos and things like that. So I was still making you know almost the same amount of money. Um, but yeah, it's going to be weird. I'm definitely going to talk about it. Uh, when it first started, people were way more scared. Before the quarantine happened, um, I was on the train and people were looking at me, man. You know, like they didn't want to stand next to me. And I, I've, I've made this joke so many times and I'd be telling them like, look, man, I'm from Manny Pacquiao country. I'm not from China. Okay. <laughs> you know, and they're just like looking at me weird. They don't want to stand next to me. And I'm like trying not to cough on the train. Right, if, right. If I just have allergies. You know, and oh man, it, it was it was tough. It was really tough. It was really weird. A weird vibe for New York City. Yeah, actually, I I, I giggle, but uh, I giggle at your reaction. But that is 
that is crazy uh, for New York City, mm-hmm. which is the most permissive and mm-hmm. tolerant place I've ever been or lived or, you mm-hmm. know. Every every shape and size there all the time. So that, yeah. that is a weird thing to experience. But I'm glad that 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 aspect of it is hopefully blown over a bit. Yeah, we'll see you next week, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. So let everyone know, uh, Ray, where they can find you, where they can find Everyday City Carry content. I know it's where. I guess where can't they find it? Yeah. <laughs> well, on YouTube, it's just Everyday City Carry. Instagram is at Everyday City Carry. Twitter is at EDC Carry. TikTok is Everyday City Carry. Just give it a Goog. Give it a Google, man. Give Everyday Goog. City Carry. There's no other Everyday City Carry. It's just me. <laughs> well, okay. So before before we wrap, I have a speed round. Uh, I sure. Wanna, I want to run you through. Perfect. Um, just so we can really, really get the cut of your jib and find out what you're all about. <laughs> all right. If the last uh, 45 minutes didn't help. All righty, sir. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Fixed or folder? Folder. Flipper or thumb stud? Thumb stud. Washers or bearings? Bearings. Tip up or tip down? Uh, tip down is the one. What's the one that we like? I keep forgetting. Tip up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. The one that is not what makes people mad. Yeah, I well, also like that. <laughs> just, just think. You always like tip up. Period. Right. I mean, you don't. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Tanto or Bowie? Uh, I'm gonna go Tanto and be Asian. Okay. Bowie or Bowie? Uh, Bowie? <laughs> oh, now you're going to be a Southerner. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hollow ground or flat ground? Oh, man. Uh, flat. Okay. I'm pretending that I know what these things are, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. D- don't, don't try and sandbag me. Uh, full size or small? Small. Gentleman's knife or tactical knife? Definitely gentleman's. Automatic or Bally Song? Not that you can have either, but in a fantasy New York. I would love a Bally Song more, man. I've definitely messed with Bally Songs before. I uh, know how to do a couple of tricks, but I'm not crazy. I would love to get into Bally Songs again. I, I bought a couple of real cheap ones at a quote-unquote martial arts store in Queens, so I think you can yeah. still... <laughs> that was a while ago, though. Uh, yep. ZT or Riyadh? <sighs> man, I've never had a Riyadh, so... I'm going to go ZT. I, I, I want the old ZT back, though. The Fast and the Furious style ZT. Yes, yes. Wait, you've you know had I mean? Wii knives. You've had Wii I've knives. had Wii, yes. Okay, so Wii. ZT or Wii? That's, that was the original oh. question. <sighs> Man. Uh, I'm still going to say ZT. Okay. Yeah. Benchmade or Spyderco? Ooh. You know what? Uh, man, Zach's my homie. I'm going to go Benchmade. All right. Yeah. Civivi or CJRB? Civivi, all the way. Uh, milled titanium or a spring clip? Milled titanium. Carbon fiber or micarta? Micarta. Finger choil or no choil? Finger choil. Form or function? Form. Yeah, you admitted it. Yeah. I'm, I'm in your camp yeah. too. <laughs> you know, I right. want both, but I'm going to say form. Yeah, yeah right. Because <laughs> yeah. if all else fails, it still looks cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And one, uh, the last one, desert island knife. One knife for the rest of your life. Not necessarily for survival on a desert island. Okay. One knife for the rest of your life, not necessarily for survival. So I'm not chopping things. Or yeah. When like I that, say right? desert island knife, I just mean you, you get to choose a knife now and, and that's mm. it. Man, one knife for the rest of my life. Man, I, know, I can't even say it. It's question. not the Clemente, dude. <laughs> it's not <laughs> even the Michael. Sorry, Dad. Uh, that I have in my collection right now. You know what? I really, I don't no, use no, it no, that no. much. It doesn't have to be in your collection. You could choose oh. some crazy oh. knife and just, that's your knife for the rest of your life. Uh, I've always wanted a Grimsmo Norseman because of Nick Shabazz. Let's do that. <laughs> Grimsmo? That's a fine choice. Yeah, and then and then if you decide to to dip out of the hobby altogether, you'll be able to leave with a nice uh, nice little bit of change mm-hmm. in your pocket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Ray, thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast. It's been awesome to get to meet you and talk to you, and I really love your channel and and uh, on YouTube. But I know it's it's all you're all over the place. So yeah, <laughs> um, and by that I mean you're you're penetrating the market. Nicely done, sir. I love what you do, and uh, I think. Uh, well, I think your approach is what's going to take you real far. So, nicely done, sir. Thank you so much for coming on. It's Thank you for pleasure. having me, man. My pleasure. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast.
If you've got questions or comments, call the 24-7 Knife Junkie listener line at 724-466-4487. And we're back on episode number 114 of the Knife Junkie podcast. Jim Person along with Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco here with you. And a good conversation there with Ray from Everyday City Carry, Bob. Uh, yeah. what, what were your thoughts, takeaways? One thing that, that really uh, occurs to me is that you take, I mean, Ray has taken two of his passions, his his fluid ability with social media and and his love for for uh, filming and uh, doing podcasts and put it together with his growing passion for knives and look he's gotten to meet so many great people already doing things this way and uh, his knowledge has grown as he said and I just admire taking two passions uh, from s- someone's personality putting them together and uh, seeing what happens uh, what you get is greater than the sum of its parts. Well, as you said, uh, he's, you know, everywhere. Got a YouTube channel. Uh, of course, he's also got a, a podcast, the Everyday City Carry podcast. Uh, we'll have uh, those links in the show notes if you want to find him there. Also, uh, Twitter and all the other uh, normal social media channels. But yeah, uh, uh, everywhere around, uh, definitely uh, uh, a force to be reckoned with here, I guess. <laughs> For sure. And I'm happy to have made another another new knife buddy. Another knife buddy. There you go. Great way to look at it. Hey, uh, if we've got you in the mood for uh, knives, be sure to check out the Knife Junkies Knives for Sale page. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives, the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Uh, some uh, great uh, prices there on uh, products that you may be interested in. Just another way to uh, show your support for the show. And, of course, the easiest way for you to uh, support the show, if you're finding great value in these interviews and what Bob is bringing, uh, give us a like. and. Or share the show with a friend. Maybe it's a tweet about the show. Maybe it's an email. Maybe it's just mentioning to a knife buddy that you listen to it. Whatever you can do to help spread the word, we would certainly do appreciate it. Bob, speaking of words, I'm going to give you the final one before we wrap it up today. All right, Jim, I'm going to say don't take dull for an answer, sir. (laughs) Okay. I love those final words. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. For Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim the Knife Newbie Person. Thanks again for joining us on episode number 114 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Knife Junkie.